Okay, I, first thing I wanted to talk about is the, the, the stuff you said about me. I, you didn't read what I <laughs> sent you. <laughs> I thought I did pretty good. <laughs> you did, thank you. It, uh, is, uh, it has been fun. Let's just, let me interject, you know, the, the, to be able to be up here and through all the years that, that Steve and I have done this together, um, it is, it's pretty special because <clears throat> I don't know if you noted it from way back when, when I was in high school or junior high school, uh, I'm that much really younger nice, than Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve was playing at Oregon State, my dad was coaching, you know, so we go back a, a long way and then to be able to kind of go forward all these years and then, and then do all the, all the radio spots, TV spots that we've done through the time. It's really unique, special, fun. Um, like I said on the, on the video, this is a special Oregon State beaver right here that is really, his heart and soul is with all of you, with this group, with this university, with our football program, and we love him for it. So Thank you, Coach. That is he doesn't, he doesn't say this usually, so let's get on with <laughs> what we usually do. We've got to talk about football. Yeah. Now. Okay. We lost a great friend and a, a guy you've mentored, a great football coach, Danny Langsdorf. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about his leaving and where he's going to be. Well, you know, Danny has probably pretty common knowledge that uh, he accepted a job with the New York Giants. He's going to go uh, coach Eli Manning. He's a quarterback coach for the New York Giants. And a great opportunity. Young, he, young. Uh, I think I think it's it's a unique spot for him. Uh, and you know, most of these jobs in coaching like this come from a connection. Uh, the guy that's a new coordinator there worked with us in New Orleans. Uh, and then, uh, so as, as time goes by, he's in New York, and there goes Danny. So we really appreciate the work that Danny did with our with our team through all the years, and and. Uh, and wish him all the best. And, and so now I guess the question leads to where do we go from there? And, and for all of you to know, it was, uh, it was an interesting process of the number of good guys that called in and wanted you know, to, to apply for the job. Um, and that's a credit to Oregon State, Oregon State football, the athletic department, all of that. So we went through that process and we hired uh, John Garrett. John Garrett is our new offensive coordinator and, and uh, excited about that. And it's been a nice, fun transition, short time. Uh, John is meeting daily with the offensive coaches and I've been in all those meetings and it's been, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, one of those opportunities for Oregon State football to, you know, we're not gonna change dramatically like I've told every candidate for the job you, uh, you're, you're not going to come in here and just put in your own stuff, right? We have a senior quarterback that is going to this year break the Pac-12 record, all-time all record for passing. I mean, so we don't want to change the world out from under him. It's about players, and so we're going to keep our system, and John Garrett's job is to make it better. Like so many of your assistants uh, and the people in your program, John Garrett and you have a history. In addition mm -hmm. to him being in the NFL for a long time, he played for you. You know, he, he was uh, part of our team with the San Antonio Riders, everybody's favorite team in the World League of American Football. I know. Uh, one of the ghosts of football past. Well, uh, we, we drafted John Garrett, he played receiver. Jason Garrett, the coach of the Cowboys, John's brother was our quarterback, we drafted him. And Judd Garrett, their other brother, played for the London team in the World League of American Football, and he's now working for the Cowboys. Great family, dad was longtime career, career coach, coached the New York Giants, was the head coach of the Giants, was the head coach, or, or coached, uh, at head coach at Columbia University, and then had a number of uh, other assistant jobs in the NFL. Great guy, great family, and uh, we're proud to have John coming. He will add to our Oregon State family. You will love him. He's a great guy, and he is really a fun, knowledgeable football coach. He, he for me, you know, is a guy that uh, I told him, come in and challenge me. I said, come on, and, and uh, we, we've got a and he's got a great line. You guys will like this. His, his deal is, let's pretend we're from Mars. 
And, when, and we don't know anything about football. And so we've got to ask the question, why did we do it like this? And I love that. Go back and examine it all, look at it, and make it better. You also had a, another player, ex-player leave, tie, a tight end coach, Kyle mm -hmm. Devan. I know he was one of your favorites. He's gone on to USC. Who will replace Kyle? Well, when you have graduate assistants, you hope you are. I love the fact that we have so many guys in our program that have played for us. You know, we have some full-time coaches like Trent Bray played for us, and, and then we have a number of graduate assistants that played for us. And, and then their deal from there is to get, in, get into the profession, get a job, you know, and we got to help them do that. And, and Kyle made a move to do that, and, and what we're going to do with that is another former player Tavita Thompson, who is working with Coach Cavan on the line, is going to move over to tight ends, and that will be good. He is a sharp young guy. He will coach the tight ends. John Garrett, the new coordinator, is actually in charge of offensive coordinator, quarterbacks, and tight ends, and he has coached both of those positions in the NFL. So he is, but he has given two graduate assistants to help him with those positions as he coordinates the offense. So. It is, uh, I think, a real good group, excited about the guys' opportunities that went out there, but really excited about the guys that are going to be coaching those spots. I know you can never tell what recruiting classes are going to be like, but um, I know you recruited a lot of people for immediate need. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you had some people last year who either were redshirting or, or just new and, and can play immediately. Talk about the, the new people who you're bringing in who will be here in the spring or you expect to really aid in the fall to this program. You know, I think that that's a, the best point about recruiting right there is that, that you know, you, there are, it, it's like slotted, you know, what, what you need to do. Uh, with freshmen, with uh, high school seniors coming in, most of the time, if I had my druthers, I would, I would redshirt them all. I love the idea of development. This program is about not necessarily where you are, but where you're going to be. And our, our getting to develop them, teach them, grow them, work them, see where they'll be as juniors and seniors, that's what I really like. Now, in saying that, we also have some guys that will come in that will be able to help our team immediately, and we have to determine that somewhere in mid-fall camp. In the middle of August, we've got to say, Steve Priest, you, you can help us right now. You're going you're gonna to play. Or, you know, the, the other guy, you, you need to redshirt. You, you're, this is going to be good for you to spend this year getting better, working, developing, growing, and then see who you be in the future. So, you know, do we want to trade that year for what that guy will be next year? Or even the other way I like to look at it is who will that guy be in his fifth year? You know, because what you're trading is that first year of playing for what he might be down the road. And that's how we beat USC. That's, you know, the development of guys that have been in the program that know what they're doing, and they can play those young guys that are, five stars and we'll take our guys that have developed and they're juniors and seniors and know how to play football and we'll go beat them. And so our program is about that and, and uh, so we have to make real good decisions on that. Now in saying that, we're gonna recruit like three junior college guys this year. We expect to come in and help us. It's like, okay, this guy has got to come in and do this for us this year. We need this spot right now. And, and so we have a couple of ideas about how that'll work. And, and, uh, and maybe, maybe we will find a couple of freshmen that do that too. You know, the, the, everybody know who Ryan Murphy is? Of course you do. Ryan Murphy is six foot one, 205 pounds, is a really good football player. And he can run, he plays safety for us, he's gonna be an NFL player, and he's gonna be a senior. And, and guys like that, around that size, I tell our coaches, go recruit 10 Ryan Murphys. You know, that, that, that would be every year, go find 10 of them because they'll be on the kickoff team, they'll be on the punt team, they'll play safety, they'll play nickelback, they'll play in the dime defense, they'll be all over the place. You can use those guys everywhere, Steve. So, you know, there might be a guy, Ricky Luchin, freshman from San Diego is that guy physically. Now, if he's ready to go, he'll be playing in the games. 
one of the success success areas in, in the way you recruit is in projecting people. You'll take uh, linebackers and you'll project them as defensive ends. Your coaches have been able to see those kinds of things and bring kids in. I, I know one of your favorite uh, comments is we, we don't particularly sign four stars, we make them. Um, how, do you, how do you learn about those kids? You can't spend all the time in the world and see them every week. So no, that's, <clears throat> that's a, that's tough. You want, you want to go on tangibles, right? You, every, everything that you can when you evaluate people is you want to go on tangible things that are important. But then it's kind of fun sometimes to look into that crystal ball. Now, there, there was a player that you all might remember named Slade Norris. Yeah. Nobody could have this crystal ball. Nobody could do this. But Slade came to us out of Jesuit as a safety Slade then got a little bit bigger and grew out of a safety into a linebacker. And then Slade, when he was like a sophomore, was still a scout team player, hadn't moved into playing in the games yet. And I asked him one day, Slade, put your hand down here and play defensive end. We need a scout team guy. You've got good speed. And, and give us a look uh, of the opponent defense as a defensive end. So go do that. And then... As time went on, like Adam Coates was playing tackle for us, and he said to me, he said, Coach, he said, Slade Norris is the toughest guy I have to block, <laughs> in, in, including all the games. And so I, I told Joe Samalo, the defensive line coach, this guy's going to be a defensive end in spring practice. Well, the next two years, Slade Norris had 20 sacks as a defensive end and had an NFL career out of it. So how do you project that? I cannot... I'll just say we were lucky because Slade comes out of Jesuit as a safety. We liked him as an athlete. He ends up moving to linebacker, moving to defensive end, and finding a career like that. Now, I'll say I will give the credit to, you know, we have good coaches that develop players, but you have to have a work ethic and a want to if you ever get anything like that accomplished, and Slade had that. Uh, you've just told us how you're successful then, but it has to be just lucky, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, you know what? We got lucky with a phone call from James Rogers yeah. about James Rogers, and those things are uh, – that's why I tell the coaches, hey, you know, the more – we got a, I got a phone call from a friend about James Rogers in January, three weeks before signing date. James Rogers led the Jaquiz Rogers, two of the greatest players and greatest people we've had at Oregon State in our football program. And so the moral to the story is answer the phone. That's, that's what you do. <laughs> Coach, the, the moral here is our five minutes are up. Oh, yeah, so I can imagine. Hopefully we're doing this yeah. in the fall. Yes, we will, we will be. Thank, Thank you. you all Thanks. very much.